Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God, it's a good night to die. <laughs> Glory. God is good all the time, isn't he? Even when we're boneheads, he's still waiting for us. Never gives up on us, even when we give up on us. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I really believe, especially in the worship, you know, the, the only way out of anything is to sow your way out. If you're not a singer, if you're not a worshiper, you ain't going to make it. Bottom line. You got to sow your way out. It ain't about religion. It's about getting in the spirit. Amen. A lot of people are waiting for all kinds of things to happen and they ain't getting nothing until they start sowing. You sow, you reap. Amen. And, and in this, one of the things the Lord is trying to do is bring healing to hearts. It's emotional healing. Because when the person is not emotional healed first, it's hard for their body to get healed. It says that a, a merry heart is good medicine. Amen? I mean, there's joy, which is released. You know, when people are miserable, your body begins to eat itself. It releases a chemical where it begins to eat itself. And, and in this, God is trying to get us to a level and a place where we have not only understanding and wisdom, but discernment to see things and to release things that we may be harboring. Everyone say harbor. There is spirits of harboring. They're called harboring spirits. Took a lot of wisdom for that one, didn't it? <laughs> Praise God. And in these harboring spirits, we have to be careful because they're protectors. People are harboring things they don't even know. Or they refuse to look at. And these spirits want us to harbor fear and pride and all kinds of other spirits because they know that it will maintain an open door to the enemy. Now, you know, a harbor, when a ship pulls into a harbor, it's a place where they exchange. Amen. They're usually unloading goods, and there's trade going on, this, that, and whatever. But it's supposed to be a safe place. That's why a ship pulls into a harbor. Well, harboring spirits make it a safe place for evil spirits. Okay? Everybody all right? Obviously, we're going to talk about harboring spirits. Matthew 7. And this is where we, when we self-examine our uh, self-examination, we have to begin to search out what spirits we are actually harboring. Because if we can't be honest with ourselves, we're rejecting God for accessing us. And Matthew 7, 21. Harboring spirits. Now, this is not harbor freight. This is harboring spirits. Hallelujah. You ain't getting tools here. In verse 21, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It's really simple. We could just shut this place down and say, and live on that scripture. Are you, and this is where you got to find out, are you doing the will of God? We're going to do a whole teaching about servant. But not tonight. Because something the Lord put in my spirit this morning. I just don't know what's going to be released yet. But are we doing the will of God? Many people don't even know what the will of God is. They're just living their life thinking this is God's will. Well, it's God's will for you to live, amen. But then there's a plan and a purpose and a calling and a destiny and so forth. 
to fulfill God's will. There's more than just getting a job, being a husband, being a wife. Hello? There's more to that of doing God's will. And he says here, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. That means eternal life. But it's amazing because they said, Lord, Lord. So these are individuals that have accepted salvation at one time. Amen? <clears throat> and he said, and, and they responded, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me because you practice lawlessness. Now, lawlessness, obviously, is someone who breaks the law. It's called lawlessness, breaking the law. Now, there's laws of God. Amen? The word of God is the law of God, doctrine of God. The righteousness of God is the law. The character of Christ, things that we might agree with or approve and stuff like that, anything that's associated with evil that we do not attack or remove, but accept and pet and agree with, is lawlessness. Amen? Amen. So, someone who breaks the law and is on the run is called a fugitive. Amen? Why? Because if you break the law, you're, it's supposed to go to prison. So we know that every demonic spirit promotes lawlessness. They're all fugitives. Even Satan himself is a fugitive right now. He's out on bail. Amen? But he's going to do the time. It's coming. He's not going to escape it. But God's using everything to train up his servants. So again, when somebody breaks the law they, and they're on the run and they're not in prison fulfilling what they're supposed to do, their time or whatever, they become a fugitive until in prison. The one who harbors a fugitive is also breaking the law. Now, I want you to think about this. If you are harboring spirits, you are breaking the law. God considers you lawlessness, a one that practices lawlessness, because you're not removing those spirits from you. Does everybody grab hold of this? That means that there's harboring spirits that are protecting these spirits, and we're agreeing with these harboring spirits, not exposing them and bringing them to light. Now we're harboring fugitive demonic forces in our temple. And that gives the enemy a right to access every part of our life where he comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Psalm 51. Harboring spirits. Psalm 51. <clears throat> we'll start at verse 1. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Oh, snap. Let's speak it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. You know, he's asking God to search them through. Amen? Blot them out. You know I'm a mess. Please, anything that I'm harboring, show me. And he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Remember, sin is the presence of evil. Transgression is the act and cooperation with the presence of evil. And iniquity is the curse that comes on you and your family line after you've committed the transgression. Is everybody okay? He said, verse 3, look at what he says. Let's speak it. For I acknowledge my transgressions. In other words, he exposed them. And my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight 
that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire what? Truth where? In the inward parts. So is the demonic spirit a liar? Yes. Yeah. So what he's saying, look, you desire the truth. You desire the spirit of truth in every part of my being. You desire your presence, your love. You desire you in every part of my being. You desire truth in my inward parts and in all of my members. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know what? Wisdom. Again, he desires truth in the inward parts, not lawlessness, which is sin, transgression, or iniquities, which gives evil access. You know, but many harbor or allow a protective, safe place for evilness. Rebellion. This is promoted by harboring spirits. Again, pride is a harboring spirit. Fear is a harboring spirit. Anger is a harboring spirit. Lying is a harboring spirit. And there are many more that are harboring spirits, and they just protect one another. They are always protecting and trying to expand their kingdom in your temple. In Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Oh, happy days. It's exposure time. Verse 1. What's it say? Blessed is he whose transgression is what? Forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit or deception. How many of y'all know deception is a harboring spirit? When I kept silent, now look at, he's saying, listen, I realized that when I, did, when I was harboring these spirits, I kept silent. Something was happening to me. He said, verse 3, when I kept silent, my bones grew what? Old. It was affecting your marrow. It affected your blood. Through my groaning all the day long, in other words, oppression. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. And my vitality was turned into what? Drought. He became dry. There was no energy drained. My vitality turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge, I finally exposed my sin to you. And my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you what? You forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you. In other words, ask you. In a time when you may be found, surely a flood of great water shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble and surround me with songs of what? Deliverance. <laughs> my bones grew old. I was groaning of oppression. Night and day there was conviction. I sensed the distance from your presence. I sensed the distance from your voice. I sensed the distance. I became very dry and eventually disconnected. Hmm. Finally came against the harboring spirits and exposed them. Repented and accepted the truth and songs of deliverance. Why? Because songs of deliverance, when you start singing and praising the Lord, what happens? There's an exchange made. But a spirit doesn't leave without you exposing it. So you can come in here, praise and worship the Lord, and still leave with those spirits. It's our responsibility to expose them. Amen? 
Matthew 7. Verse 15. <clears throat> you know, many people harbor spirits because of shame. They hold it in themselves. Bitterness, offense, all of these things you can be harboring and not even realizing it. Verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but what? Inwardly they are what? Ravenous wolves. Are they harboring spirits? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say a wolf is a spirit here. You will know them by their what? Fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears fruit, uh, bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know. In other words, by the fruit. You will know spirits by what you think. Amen? What's coming up in your thoughts? What's before you all the time? Remember he said, my sin is always before me. In other words, what's always there? It's a harboring spirit somewhere. Some, some spirit in you is being harbored. It's got a safe passage. Even sickness can be a harbored. Hebrews 12. You know, some people will harbor sickness because they collect disability. They'd rather have the money, they'd rather main, harbor the sickness and diseases so they don't have to go to work. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a time and place for all of it. Amen. But we should always be looking for freedom from sickness and disease. I don't care how much money there is. Because, you know, when you fall into the hands of the world's physicians, you can be guaranteed that there's going to be some kind of disconnect. Because that's what their purpose is, is to get you disconnected from the true presence of God. To get you in the place of inconsistency. Amen? Unless he's a spiritual doctor and he's looking out for your best interest. And he isn't going to put you on all kinds of stupid medication. Amen? <clears throat> it's amazing if you really look at what antidepressants and all these other things are. What's the side effect? Suicide. Oh. Oh. But people don't look at those things. Why? God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't know these things. They live on medication for years, never connected to the presence of God to get freed because it's always nullifying them. He was 12, 14. Oh, hallelujah. It says what? Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become what? Defiled. Wow. Wait a minute. It says many became defiled by the root of what? Bitterness. Bitterness. Offense. People still hold it. Oh, I ain't getting near that person. That's bitterness. Listen, you may not like what a person does, amen, but don't fall in a place of bitterness towards them. 
You sever all those emotional attachments with them. You commit them in the hands of God. Or you'll be tormented. And you'll harbor a spirit of torment. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of God's plan. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become what? Defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profound profound profane person like Esau who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now this is phenomenal. See, when people begin to harbor bitterness, it leads to a broken covenant. <laughs> and eventually if a person goes beyond the point of no return, they sell their birthright. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15. You know, so many times because people are harboring these spirits, they can't receive the love of God. It's hard for them to receive God's love. That, and, and, and in fact, what begins to happen is they're, they've either never reached their true identity or it's been stolen now. You know, many people have been hurt by the church, they say. Well, they just got offended because they allowed it. I mean, let's be real. You, nothing can hurt you unless you let it. Well, you don't know what they did to me. Who cares? Forgive, bless, and go on. Amen? Everyone in this room has been offended at some time. Everyone in this room has been rejected. Welcome to the earth. It's a place of rejection, offense, bitterness, and every stinking thing else. But we're not connected here anymore. Unless you're still connected here, you will live that life. Until you get disconnected and unplugged from this place and live from the future, everything is different. Why? Because you're heavenly bound, not earthly bound anymore. You're no longer in survival mode. You're in surrender mode. And you know that everything is going to work to the good no matter what goes on. Don't love the world, verse 15, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen? And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us. They went out from us. Why? Because they were harboring. They were what? Harboring. They were harboring evil spirits. They went out from us. Why? Because when a person is harboring something, whether offense or whatever, the enemy is eventually going to get him out of the flock. Because that's how he operates. He wants to get him alone. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all these things. It's like, you know these things. Don't love the world. <laughs> all those harboring spirits. What is it? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. You know, what does the word say? God rejects the proud but gives grace or the plan to the humble. Humble. So these individuals that were manifested is because they are harboring spirits. Romans 1. God knows every secret, you know. <laughs> Ain't nothing hidden from him. <laughs> I don't want anybody to know. Every 
everybody knows. <laughs> it's fact, it's recorded. <laughs> and you're not on candid camera. Romans 1, verse 18. Let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who what? Suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they're rejecting the truth because they're harboring deception. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were what? Darkened. See, when you harbor an evil spirit, what was light is now dark, because it brings blindness. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. Exchanged the truth of God for so they were harboring the lie. They exchanged the truth for a lie. They exchanged light for darkness. They exchanged life for death because of a false fulfillment. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged a natural use. Women, ex for what? For even their women exchanged a natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burning their lust for what? One another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due. You know, it's amazing when you hear... You know, you never, when I was younger, you didn't hear people coming out of the closet. As I became older, they were getting, coming out. I didn't know anybody was hiding in the closet, actually. I, I you know, I thought, man, how did they eat, you know? I mean, I was just stupid about all that stuff, man. And, and, and so when they started coming out of the closet, and started manifesting, especially when they started cross-dressing I mean, cross and all the other stuff. And, and things just became worse and worse. Well, think about it. They were in the closet. They were harboring. They were harboring these spirits. And these spirits were just getting stronger, stronger, and stronger. Getting fed by other spirits. Same thing with a person with addiction. They were harboring these spirits. They don't want people to know. They're... They're still in the closet, too. Boy, when I was out there using I locked myself in the closet. You kidding? They were out there. Actually, they were in here. I could hear the door slam at the airport. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, sometimes I think I heard spaceships landing on other planets, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But man, you know, when, when people are harboring, these spirits get stronger and stronger. And they begin to drive out and exchange light for darkness, truth for deception, and it just gets stronger and stronger to where a person can go to a point of no return. Hallelujah. Romans 6. Actually, I hope I finished what I was No, I didn't finish. Go back. Stay there. Roman 1. Hallelujah. Uh, I think we're at verse 28, right? 
Thank you. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up over to debased mind to do the things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Man, they have been in the closet. They've been harboring all these spirits, and things just got worse. You just harbor one, and the next thing, another one shows up, and another one shows up, and it just continues. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of what? Death. Death. Why? Because they are disconnected. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So people that approve, again, of abortion and sexual perversion, same-sex marriage, they actually think they're going home to heaven. That door shut. Access denied. That's why you and I got to tell them. Amen? Don't harbor sin, right? Don't harbor these spirits. Galatians chapter 5. You know, when I was out, did we do it? Oh, all right, Romans 6. Thank you. Snap. Romans 6. Must have been my conscience speaking. <laughs> I didn't want to harbor that, you know. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. Ooh, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. You got to say that one again. He who has died has been freed from sin. That's why we have this saying, it's a good day to die. If you die to yourself, you've been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead into sin, indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. In other words, do not harbor sin, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of what? Unrighteousness. Now, if it's unrighteousness, is it lawlessness? Yes. So we're actually harboring fugitives, demonic fugitives that need to go to the pit. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness but to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness of God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Again, don't harbor sin. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 19. People are still harboring the works of the flesh. 
The works of the flesh are what? Evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like it, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God or eternal life. That's pretty, saying, uh, pretty plain and simple, I believe, you know. So anyone that's harboring these works of the flesh is not going to make it home. Amen? But if, <clears throat> hallelujah. Philippians 1. Harboring spirits. Verse 9. Everybody there? Let's speak it. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and all discernment. In other words, that you may maintain a thirst and hunger for God's love, His word, his justice, his righteousness, his presence. See, if you maintain that thirst and hunger, you will sense things that are trying to hinder you. And you won't want to harbor them. You'll want to get rid of them, ASAP. That you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ. How many of y'all know that? Offense. People, many people harbor offense. Many. And it, and it is, is tormenting. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. <laughs> so that it has become evident of the whole palace guard to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by chains, are, more, are much more bold to speak the word without what? Fear. How many you know that fear? Pe many people harbor fear. In fact, that is a tremendous harborer, a, a, a spirit that harbors. Why? Because people refuse to expose things. Because they're afraid. Well, what will someone say? Well, what I, you know, this is where people lie and not be honest. But they're, they don't realize that they're standing before God, not man. They may be, be standing before a man, but they're standing before God, lying right to his face. Amen? Psalm 119. And this is how people lead to destruction, holding offense. Psalm 119. Harboring spirits. Hallelujah. And verse 65. Psalm 119, 65. Let's speak it. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now, how was he afflicted? He was harboring. Amen? He said, I went astray. In other words, I became afflicted because I went astray from your word. I went astray from your word because I was harboring some deceit, something wrong. Before I, went, I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I what? Keep your word. Is his word truth? 
is this word light. Yes. Now light is coming into areas. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as a fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than the thousands of coins and gold and silver. So he said after he became free, he re realized that his affliction was exposing what he was harboring. Now when he exposed it and removed it, he said, man, I'm glad I was afflicted. Joshua 7. Oh, happy days. Joshua chapter 7. It's right before Judges. <laughs> it's between Deuteronomy and Judges. Does that help anyone? Anyways, Joshua 7, all right? Verse 10. Is everybody there? Now, Joshua went out to go battle, and he lost the war. <laughs> he got his butt kicked. And he came back and said, what the snap? Lord, you sent us out there. Why did you send us out there when we lost? We thought you were with us. So Joshua uh, went on the ground, started throwing dirt on his head and everything. And, and the Lord said to Joshua in verse 10, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has what? Sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant with my, which I commanded them. For they have been, they have even taken some of the what? Accursed things mm. and have both stolen and deceived and they have also put it among their own stuff in other words they harbored they harbored accursed items therefore the children of israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction he said neither will i be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Now, accursed items, paraphernalia, alcohol. You don't even realize even cigarettes are accursed items. Even, what do you call that, uh, dip? Dip. All of these things are accursed items. Why? Because they bring a false fulfillment. Pornography, drugs, alcohol, certain books, even certain medications are accursed items. Why? Because they alter the mind. Movies, logos, clothing, all kinds of things. These are accursed items. When people harbor them, they can't defeat their enemy. And if you're living with someone that's involved in it, it destroys the whole house. You can never advance. It doesn't work. Until the whole house is cleaned up because the house is considered the campus. It is the place. In 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter six. That's why we expose anything that comes on the campus that we know is an accursed item, because it affects everybody. Many times things begin to happen on campus, and the first thing my wife and I will say, "Cursed items on this campus somewhere." And if either it's going to manifest or. I mean, it always manifests somehow. 
person usually manifests, or we, we find out about it. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Is everybody there? Now godliness with contention is great gain. And is everybody there? Contentment, I'm sorry. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. And we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be what? Rich. Fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, all men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of it on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Wow. What's he saying? People fall in love with money and greed. They harbor it. They try and hide it. But money in their heart, they love. Listen, I want a lot of money. But I don't serve money. Money should serve us. Amen? We don't chase money. I'm not saying that we don't labor, but even when we labor, we labor onto the Lord, not onto the money. Amen? We, we take what money is there to utilize for the kingdom. Our life is kingdom living. Everything is kingdom living. People begin to build their own empires. It's not about that. Kingdom living. Amen? Oh, hallelujah, because the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Galatians 6. You know, we were brought up in a world to harbor the love of money. We were brought up in a world that said, you need to make money. You need to get an education. You need to, get, you need to do this to make money, to make money, to make money. They've always put God as money. I know I wasn't brought up saying, you need to do the will of God. I never heard that when I was a kid. I heard you're a little devil. And you were a mistake. I heard those things. But I never heard you need to do a will of God. I heard you need to become somebody. You need to get a job. So when I quit school and went and got a job, then I got harassed. Then I got an education afterwards. I got an education on the street. But everything was about money. That's why I became a drug dealer. It wasn't about getting high. It was about the money. But I got involved too deep. Then I started getting high. Then it was about getting high and not the money. <laughs> then I needed the money to maintain my habit. But in the beginning, it was about the money. I liked the money then. I was able to buy whatever I want, go where I want, whatever. But then the money was to support the demons that I was harboring. Galatians 6, in verse 7. What's it say? Don't be what? Deceive is deception, har a harboring spirit. Yes. How many of all know religion is a harboring spirit? <laughs> spirit of religion. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also what? He's going to reap. Nobody gets away with it. He who sows to the flesh will reap 
corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. Again, many people are still harboring deception. Don't be deceived. Harboring rebellion. Even disobedience is harboring. Evil agreements. People become hardened hearted by harboring these spirits. Ephesians 5. And then one more scripture. Did you ever get around somebody who's got a bad attitude all the time? And they're harboring st st stuff, man. You know? Verse 3, Ephesians 5, 3. Let's speak it. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetousness man. Isn't covetousness harboring? Amen who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. So he's trying to tell us, get, stop harboring these things. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are what? Evil. Evil. You know, we are hard-pressed all the time. Trying, the enemy's always trying to get us to agree with something and then harbor it. 1 Corinthians 4. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, oh yes, is everybody there? Let's be, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, whoever is required in stewards that one be what? Found faithful. But with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself. Yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is what? The Lord. So I want you to know that when you have a connection with the Lord, as he's always before you, you are judging yourself because he's judging you. It's always constant. It's not a, uh, well, let me check my, it's a constant. That's why you and I are always looking for conviction. Amen? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of what? Darkness, and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God, not from man. Amen? So, yes, it is important that we self-examine ourselves because the Lord is constantly doing it. Amen? Allow the light and truth to penetrate every area of your being. Let nothing be hidden in you and harbored. Bring it out. That's why he says, cast your cares. Confess your sins. Bring it out. Let God know. Amen? Don't harbor anything. It will bring torment. It mislead you, begin to blind you, 
and its purpose is to kill you and prevent you from fulfilling what you've been called to do. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to continue to examine us and bring us this reality and truth and expose all these harboring spirits and anything that we are harboring, Lord, any lawlessness. We ask that you bring it to light that we may agree, expose it, remove it, condemn it, and replace it with your truth. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.